Good morning. The title of the devotion this morning is Life in the In-Between. And I want to read from Matthew 27, verse 57 to 66. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So... Give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. The events of Easter are very clearly laid out for us from the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, Jesus' arrest and his crucifixion on Good Friday. The darkest and most intense times are then superseded by the glory of the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning. We can see these key moments spaced out on a timeline. We know them and we understand what happened and when. But if we look a little closer at the timeline, we'll see there is a blank, largely undocumented space between the drama of Good Friday and the glory of Easter Sunday. This was a time of confusion, disappointment, pain, regret, of hopes dashed. It was a time when people felt that the promises of God they had once held so confidently and so certainly were just between their fingers now like shredded rags meaningless. Perhaps they felt foolish for daring to believe, for being proved wrong. Saturday was a reality check, a time to get real and face up to the facts. What they hoped for was gone and now they had to make sense of it. Perhaps this in-between zone is more familiar territory than we would ever dare to admit. The drama and spiritual intensity of Good Friday, the noise and the activity are a rare thing. The soaring joy of powerfully answered prayer and witnessing miraculous power seem just ever so slightly out of reach. Joseph did his best to give Jesus a dignified and appropriate burial, but with the body he buried so many hopes and dreams. We get used to the fact that ours is a life in the in-between, nothing to write about, nothing to mark it out. But living here in this in-between makes it possible for us to meet Jesus, even when it feels like hope is gone or we're lost in the unspectacular and we expect nothing more. Easter Saturday is a time for people who have seen Jesus, who have put their hope in him but are not sure what the future holds. Do you feel like you have no reason to look up and out? All that lies before you is more of the same. Easter Saturday is for you. Easter Saturday reminds us that no matter how powerless we may feel, no matter how relentless our circumstances, transformation can be just a dawn away. God doesn't write out a script in advance for us to know what to expect, but he asks us to trust in his unlimited power. His ability to roll away the stone even after the tomb has been sealed and a guard placed to prevent it. You may feel that decisions have been made that will prevent the purposes of God being fulfilled in your life. Pilate gave the order to secure the tomb. God had another agenda. All you may hear are the orders and decrees over your life. Your destiny is decided by forces outside of your control. They might be physical, financial, emotional or health related. People and circumstances have taken control and it seems there is nothing God can do. Easter Saturday is for you. There is no security measure, no shutdown, no opposition, no barrier that can stand in the way of what God wants to do. 
Now, without jumping into the resurrection day too much, I just want to pick up on the account in John chapter 20, verse 1 to 5. Mary was the first to see that the stone had moved and not knowing what to do, ran to Simon, Peter and John, who would have been feeling the loss so acutely. They both ran as fast as they could and they came to the tomb and it says John who arrived first said he stooping down and looking in saw the linen cloths lying there yet he did not go in. In the greyness of Easter Saturday in the wondering and the waiting know that God has moved and he invites you to see what he has done for you. This morning Look into the tomb and consider what this might all mean. Easter Saturday leads us to an invitation to believe again. Let us pray. Father God, we know that sometimes in the timelines of your purpose for our lives, you leave us uncertain and without clear understanding of all that you're doing. Help us in those times, though we can't change anything, to watch and to wait to watch and to wait for the call, to watch and to wait for the invitation to look, and to watch and to wait for the resurrection moment. Strengthen us when we can't strengthen ourselves. Keep us close to your heart and lead us in every season of life, we pray. 